Hi, welcome back. Welcome if you're new. This week we have a bit of a thrift haul and some thrift flips. So we were at our local thrifting market and I managed to pick up some amazing fabric again. This is Prudhomme's Antique Market. It is just off the highway between uh, bef just before you get to Niagara Falls, Canada, and it is nestled between Lake Ontario and the Niagara Escarpments. This place has been there for many, many years, and I've picked up some really, really cool stuff over the years. Uh, we just actually found out that it is no longer, it, the land has been sold, and the market is, I don't know if it's going anywhere else, but uh, it will no longer be there, I think, at the end of the season. This will be its last season. But you can see they have some really, really cool stuff. It's outdoors and indoors. Um, these, uh, these are the decorations and ornaments that go on your um, chandeliers. Um, they weren't, the prices were okay, but they weren't brilliant. But a lot of the stuff is like recycled and, and repurposed and it's very, very pretty stuff. The pricing is uh, neither here nor there. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But it's, it's always a great source of inspiration. The, um, the items here are literally everything that you find in your local thrift stores. Um, these little shelves and picture frames have all just been picked up for literally a couple of dollars here and there. And then they've been painted up, sprayed up and thrown on, you know, maybe two, three hundred percent markup. But people were buying them. So if, uh, you know, if you need inspiration, these places are fantastic for that. I must admit, I'm, well, as you know, I'm partial to artwork and there were some really nice pieces in here. But again, first of all, they're a little bit overpriced. And secondly, I've got so much artwork at the moment, I just don't have enough walls to put, put them up. So um, some of the areas were on sale. Um, in fact, that's how we figured out that it had been sold because I'd asked a couple of these little shops were... Um, mark down you know everything must go and i happened to mention to one of the vendors and she'd mentioned then told me that uh, yep it was going out of business that the, the land had been sold um the attic room as always was the best they have the best stuff up here um, it's usually in a bit more of a mess because it's so it's not made it to the actual showroom shops so this is like a surplus so it's always a little bit worse for wear but if you've got the time to clean things up and really have a rummage through i've picked up some great stuff from here um the problem was on this day it was and i'm not joking it was like 60 degrees up there it was so hot um so i had a quick rummage around and then uh, went back downstairs because it was just too warm The way the pricing works in this place, everything has got a little tag on it with somebody's name on or a number and then you take that to the office downstairs and they will tell you whose who's, uh, stall it came from and usually if there's not a price how much it is. So it's, uh, it's all very well organised. I fell in love with this light fitting. It was like a candle. It was an electrical light fitting. It was wired, but it fits flat against the wall. Um, I, I'm assuming it was a pair at some point. Um, it was lovely. And I would have actually picked it up if we'd have been in our own home or I've had any storage space, I would have got it, but I left it there. Um, I regretted it a little bit because it was so nice and so unusual. A 
Okay, down to business. This is flip number one. If you remember at the last house, I had the most amazing plate rack. It was enormous and it was too big to bring with me. I wanted one for this house, so I came up with an idea. So this was a little bit more mobile. And what it does, it's going to fit on top of the cabinet in the kitchen. I enjoy having the plate racks. I enjoy having the plates out and ready to use straight away. So we found this side table and it was my husband's idea. Uh, we were gonna reuse everything on it as part of the, pl the plate rack. So what he decided to do was take the shelf out, take the cupboard doors off, and then he ran it through his circular store, saw, and he cut, he cut it in, uh, so two thirds of it, he cut the back third off. And then what he did was he took the shelf, cut it down to size, and added that into the bottom and reinforced it and that gave me my bottom shelf and this is what he's doing right here he's taking the pieces from the the back of the unit that he cut off he's then transferred them to the front of the cabinet that we are using and that is now going to be the base for my shelf uh, and you can see there the, the shelf is now being screwed to that. That's given me my uh, permanent shelf for the plate rack. This, he cut four pieces of wood, all the same length, which is going to be the, uh, this is going to be drilled and this is where my um, dowels will go. And what he did was he cut four pieces the same and he made a box, uh, an oblong box and then an oblong tray and then they're going to be connected by the dowels and he's going to slide these in and that's where my plates are going to go. So I filled in all the holes, uh, rubbed it all down and gave it three coats of white paint. So here we have the plate rack which is going to be inserted into the finished shelf that we've made. So it's literally, it's a little cage. Uh, there was the tray at the bottom with the dowel holes. We put the dowels in and fitted the oblong piece on top. We used two pieces of wood on each side to help to stabilise it. I ended up leaving them in and painting them white just because it kept, kept everything stable while we inserted it into the finished shelf. Um, it wasn't that easy to get the dowels in, I must admit, but uh, between the two of us, we managed it. Um, and you won't see all of the uh, insides of this because it's going to be placed, it's going to slide into the shelf and fit up inside. Um, so we uh, grabbed the, the finished shelf, put it on the table upside down, slid this in and then screwed it from both sides. And that gave us our, our finished plate rack. Okay, so to flip number two, and once again, I just happened to find a big bolt of fabric. It was sitting at a, a stall that a lady had set up. She had quite a few pieces, and I grabbed this, and I thought, it's beautiful. How much is this going to cost me? And she said, give me $30. So I gave her $30, and there were yards and yards and yards of the most beautiful chinoiserie fabric. And of course, it was perfect for my living room. So what I did was I just cut the panels. I've cut them so that they match. There was enough for four panels. 
and I did it so that they could match them up if I needed to and then I just sewed them to my existing curtains. So in, for all intents and purposes they are lined curtains and come the winter time I can flip them around. They are beautiful, they look so nice in the room. Um, I think because the walls are very plain, uh, because the furniture is plain, uh, you need a pop of colour and pattern and I think because of the way the room's set up it's just it's perfect it's absolutely finished the room now what I've done is I've put the curtains up on these rods but I will be making a valance for each window in next week's video and I'm going to be making that I'm going to show you how I can do that it is very very easy it is very very cheaply done and it is something that just finishes off your curtains so for thirty dollars i got four panels um, like i said what i've done is i've matched the pattern so in the future i can take these curtains apart and i can make two big full sets of full curtains and you can see there i'm just so pleased with how they turned out they are so nice and they look beautiful in the room So flip number three, this is a really, really easy one. Um, I picked up this little footstool, $5, uh, probably two weeks ago, and I wanted to dress it up and make it look more ornate. So I thought, okay, I'll find some ornate legs and I'll put those on. Well, I searched high and low and I couldn't find any ornate legs that were short enough. So I grabbed these, these were a dollar each, and I left them the color they were. I thought I'll live with that and see how they were and I just pre-drilled the hole and screwed the little feet in. And it has literally turned it from a footstool into a really rather nice little coffee table. It's just given, it, the legs have given it that little bit of height that it needed. Um, and it looks really quite nice, quite elegant. Um, I will continue to look for legs if I can find them. Um, if I can find the little casters with the, uh, um, the brass ones, you see them sometimes with the little feet on and the little uh, wheels on. I will pick them up um, as long as they're not too expensive. There, that's the bucket that I did last week, the coal bucket. I sprayed it black and I've just put some artificial flowers in for now. And I will change that out seasonally. I think I'll put some different things in for the fall and winter. But I'm really pleased with how the uh, footstool turned into a nice coffee table. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to come back next week when I will take the material, the foam board and the glue gun and make some matching window valances. Honestly, you'll be surprised how great it turns out. Thanks so much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and give me the thumbs up.